Hi, my name is JW. This is my path to our CP, part six, day two and three. It's been interesting couple of days. Yesterday I was totally spent uh, mentally, so I didn't prepare a vlog. Uh, it was good since I got to spend all of that time doing the actual exploitation and uh, getting through the materials. Uh, I went from doing reconnaissance in the lab uh, with certain tools, uh, running really long, uh, long running uh, scanning in the lab network. And uh, I got through that. I, basically, I kept the scans running in the background and then moved forward with the actual material. And I was able to yesterday uh, blaze through the the the, the uh, buffer overflows for Windows chapter and exercises also and that was really exciting when I saw the video title introduction to buffer overflows I was like okay this is now it's getting serious like we're hitting serious business now and it was really exciting I, I have some previous knowledge about how stack smashing and so forth work because I've done a little bit of research into reverse engineering and so forth but this was the first time I got proper like attacker mentality um, guidance into doing it and the material was really good uh, easy to follow and I was super excited uh, when finally uh, the reverse shell came. I, I sent some malicious uh, text to a mail server. Of course, it was a fairly old vulnerable mail server for this uh, specific exercise, but I can't describe how bloody excited I was when that reverse shell came. I had my Netcat listener on and suddenly it says, see documents and settings administrator and I say IP config and who am I and I see system user uh, account there uh, coming from the payload that I had crafted uh, with um, with the Metasploit tools and uh, I was able to get reverse shell it was very exciting um, so yeah yesterday I, s I got something like one and a half hours of videos done uh, 50 plus pages in the PDF and uh, I studied for I think it was a total of five hours if I'm not mistaken yeah I think it was five hours uh, straight um, well not straight there was dinner in between but uh, basically straight on and by the end of it my my, my dreams were semi-filled with hexadecimal uh, characters and memory dumps. Today I continued, uh, basically the first reverse shell was hand-holding. I could follow the examples in materials and basically it got me through and I was able to customize some bits of it so it, it felt like it, I actually did something instead of just going through step by step and copy pasting. But then the next task, uh, which I left for today, was basically, okay, without handholding, here's another vulnerable, vulnerable executable. Please run it on your machine and then try to do a proof of concept and get an exploit running. Um, and with that, I first spent two hours crafting a very very clever too clever uh, result and payload for it and couldn't get it working I was counting the bytes and trying to fiddle with uh, with buffers of uh, uh, capital A's and knob characters and like hexa 90 and so forth but then at some point I noticed that hey by the way there's a much much easier way to do this I was like I, it can't be this easy. Please tell me I haven't just wasted two hours of my study time. 
and yes, yes, I had two hours wasted. Well, not wasted in the sense that at least in the future, I will know to look for it. So, lesson learned. But it was useless in the sense that I was pursuing the wrong rabbit hole. I was able to get the the second exploit done and I got the reverse shell again. Then I was able to move forward with uh, Linux exploitation. Uh, so basically yesterday and today when I was doing the Windows exploitation, I was using Oli uh, Debug and also mostly the majority was spent in Immunity Debugger. So I'm really glad I'm getting really like some sort of hands-on experience with these debuggers that I've seen references to, uh, but haven't had any sort of real-world experience with. And especially with these debugger debuggers, if you don't know which buttons press, there's so many different things you could do and not get any sane results. And today, uh, with the Linux exploitation, obviously, uh, at least for me, obviously, uh, when you talk about debuggers in Linux, the first thing that comes to mind is GDB, uh, GNU debugger, which is basically a command line tool. Thankfully, or I don't know, I would say thankfully, uh, the course doesn't use GDB, at least in the start. We used Evans debugger, EDB, uh, which is basically a fairly similar debugger to uh, to Immunity. And it was nice point and click, find hexa locations and nice opcode finder and so forth instead of uh, the Mona modules uh, in uh, Immunity. But yeah, again, I was able to, uh, after doing stupid things in the <laughs> Linux exploit and actually reading what I was doing, uh, and putting some thought into it, I was able to get my first Linux uh, bind shell because it was a local exploit and uh, it was uh, less exciting this time because I was so frustrated with myself having done stupid things for the past 30 minutes uh, and not paying attention. Uh, but finally, I got it. Uh, now I'm moving forward to other places, but I decided that now would be a good time to do this vlog. Uh, also, one thing I learned yesterday was basically how to uh, make nmap resume scanning. Because uh, if you've ever done anything bigger than one host, you know that nmap scans can take time. But yesterday, actually... <laughs> I had very interesting uh, debugging information from uh, from uh, Nmap. I was running against one target, but I was running all of the Nmap scripts uh, just to see what sort of output I get uh, because this is the first time I'm allowed to run uh, like uh, heavy duty scanning against hosts. And it was really interesting. Uh, the Nmap was telling me uh, at some point that okay, this is going to take five hours, now six hours, now six and a half hours. I was like, oh my, uh, I need to cancel this and make it sure that I can resume if needed. So I found out that if you are giving uh, the switch to Nmap that it saves with the uh, O-N, O capital N, give it some file name, it will basically save the current results in that nmap file and then you're able to resume that if you control c uh, interrupt it you're able to resume it with nmap dash dash resume and that file name but uh, it only works if you don't suspend your vm in the middle i learned that the hard way but anyway the etas were basically like five hours six hours six and a half hours then four hours then two minutes and actually yesterday, yesterday evening, I had the, uh, the bloody scan running at 99.92% done, ETA 7 seconds. And it was in that state for one and a half hours. No way to know what it's waiting on. Is this a failed result? No idea. I left it running and unfortunately I just uh, suspended my uh, VM 
before I remembered to control C it so I could tomorrow today resume it and it basically broke the re broke the scan but today I was able to get it uh, through in like 20 minutes and what else anything worth mentioning yeah I've found plenty of different Windows machines already uh, using different kinds of uh, scanning uh, and it's interesting to see that there are plenty of different patch levels and versions of Windows in this uh, network. I can't go into details of uh, which I found, but uh, plenty, plenty to hack against. And um, yeah, I guess that's that's it. As this is uploading, I'm going to quickly write a small blog post. Uh, that's the companion post for this. As always, I'll have some snippets and links there if, if needed. Uh, and after that, I'll be probably continuing at least for one hour, uh, going further, further into the material, since I have at least one hour left before I need to head to sleep. Uh, let's see if um, there's the possibility that work might interrupt me, so... Let's see if I can uh, finish a chapter in at least some videos in the materials today. Also, big shout out to anyone giving me any sort of feedback on these. I, I, I'm really, really surprised at how many people have sent me tweets or whatever comments on, on this progress. And it really, really... Mm, it makes me smile. Thank you.